Since you're here and uh, in our lightning talks, we're going to be talking also about the AstroPi uh, experiment. Uh, would you give us uh, some information about your, your experience with it in your Principia mission? Absolutely. Um, so AstroPi uh, was a wonderful concept uh, working with uh, the company Raspberry Pi, who, uh, if you're not aware of them, they produce these fantastic affordable computers really designed so that young children can get involved in coding. I should say young children and adults because it's just as much fun for the adults as well. Um, you, these days we have our smartphones, we have our tablets. Uh, and it's the kind of thing that we are very aware of, of using the apps, but we never get inside those. You don't take them apart anymore. You don't break them apart and start coding and experimenting. Well, a Raspberry Pi, you do exactly that. You play around with it. Uh, you can't break it. You write code. You try things out and, and experiment with it. So uh, it's one of the, from Principia mission, it was one of the 30 educational outreach programs that we ran during the mission. And the idea was to get two of these Raspberry Pis on board the International Space Station and run a, a competition for children so that they could actually write their own code and run their own code in space. And we were absolutely amazed by the response to this, not just in terms of the number of people who wanted to get involved in coding, but also the quality of the response, the quality of the, the actual code that was being written, the ideas and the programs. Uh, I remember one um, group of teenagers who realized that actually on board the space station we uh, have a higher exposure to radiation and we have a problem with our cameras when you see these lovely photographs of space. Well actually the cameras on board the space station after about two years the pixels start getting very degraded because of radiation exposure. And these teenagers decided well the camera on the Raspberry Pi computer could be used as a, a radiation detector if you just wrote the code for it. Uh, and they turned this uh, as we call them the Astro Pi Ed and Izzy, the two Astro Pies on board, one of them got turned into a radiation decimeter. Um, another one was an MP3 player, which was obviously for much more fun and entertainment for the crew. But uh, it, it's a wonderful experiment, and I'm very pleased to say that it's gone from strength to strength. It ran on, on my mission, on Tom Pesquet's mission, on Paolo's mission, and Alex will also be involved in Astro Pie operations as well. I would like to invite here... Um, Alana Bartolini from the ESA Education Office, and she will be talking about AstroPi, what, which you've heard a few words earlier with uh, Tim Peake. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, so first off, thank you to Tim for the lovely introduction. I'll tell you a little bit more about the European AstroPi Challenge, which has evolved over the past few years, first starting in the UK, and now it has expanded across Europe. So the European AstroPi Challenge is an annual scientific and coding challenge where student code is run on the International Space Station. The project is run in collaboration with the Raspberry Pi Foundation, uh, and it's a part of ESA Education's program for primary and secondary school education across Europe. The challenge provides students with the opportunity to engage with coding activities in the context of space. The project uses computer coding as a means to do scientific investigations and through this encourages students to engage with science, technology, engineering and mathematics to hopefully promote them to go into these fields in the future. The learning objectives of the program are logical thinking, coding in Python, and working scientifically which includes developing a scientific experiment, collecting data and analyzing that data. And to do this, the students use the AstroPi tool. So the AstroPi, which looks like this, is an augmented Raspberry Pi computer. And it uh, has a host of sensors on board, which include environmental and movement sensors. So these are things like temperature, humidity, pressure, an accelerometer, a magnetometer, uh, and a gyroscope. And we have certified two of these for spaceflight, so they are currently on board the ISS. Each of them has a camera module within them. One has a visible camera and one has an infrared camera, which allows for different types of scientific investigations to be performed. Uh, both also have an 8x8 LED screen, which allows for uh, text and, and images to be shown on the screen. So the European AstroPi Challenge for 2018-2019 is going to run during the school year, which is from September until June. Uh, and this is going to be done in the context of two types of missions. So there is a basic mission and a more advanced mission. 
In the basic mission, this is for students uh, who are under the age of 14, and it is a non-competitive -comp non comp non mission. Uh, and in this task, the students are, um, are challenged to Uh, in, this, in this task, the challenge is for students to uh, code a simple code using an online emulator of the AstroPy um, of the AstroPy version online. And in this, it's a code which is a greeting message for the crew and a reading of the ambient temperature in the Columbus module. For this uh, non-competitive mission, all of the codes are run and they're run for 30 seconds on the ISS. In the more advanced mission, which is known as Mission Space Lab, uh, this mission uh, is, is a competitive mission, and this is for more advanced students. Uh, and in this, the teams are tasked to de design a scientific investigation for which they can get a uh, ESA education produced AstroPy kit. And this kit is a tool to allow them to work on it in the classroom with their teachers uh, so that they can design their code and submit it to the competition. If they are selected for the competition, uh, they are able to run their code on the ISS for three hours or two orbits, which is quite fantastic for young students and very exciting, as you can imagine. Uh, and once their code is run, they are uh, able to get their results back, uh, and they are able to analyze the results just like a real space scientist. So all of these students' teams are supported by ESA Education and the National Space Education Resource Offices, which are in the ESA member states, known as Azeros. And the support for these teams and teachers is done through teacher training, as well as uh, through classroom resources, which are available to the students. So for the 2018-2019 challenge, Alexander Gerst is going to be an ambassador for the program. He will kick off the challenge and he is going to encourage students and teachers to participate in the program for their chance to have their code run in space. Thank you.